Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on OpenMP implementation in Fortran. Now in this tutorial I will be talking about an at atomic construct. Now, an atomic construct is actually an alternative to critical block construct provided you have atomic operations in it. It's slightly faster when compared to critical blocks while execution and it helps you to save some time during the execution. Now, before we go on with atomic constant, I would like to let tell you guys what an atomic operator is, because otherwise you might you might not understand what's you might not understand what it is. See, in some op in operating systems or in concurrent programming languages, concurrent programming concepts, okay, an operator is said to be atomic if it's a capable if it's atomic, linear, in uh, in, in I mean uninterruptible or something like that in mo with lot more terms, okay. If the if it's capable of reading or writing or changing the value of the variable in a single step or else instantaneously, okay, that's when you call it atomic. If you're taking a variable from a date, if you're able to take a data from a variable in a single step or write data to a variable in a single step, modify the data to a variable in a single step or something like that, all of this happens in us, all these things happen in one single step, like reading or writing or like that, then it's atomic. Whereas if the operator takes multiple steps to do these, then it's a non-atomic operator. Okay. To illustrate this, let's look at this example. Let's say in one particular hardware or in one some other programming language, okay, equal sign behaves as an atomic uh, atomic construct. Okay. So a is a a is a variable which has nothing which is empty at time t equals zero, and after that we're introducing a equals four. So at time t equals 0, a is empty. So at time t equals 1, since a equal sign behaves as an atomic operator, at time t equals 1, a will be filled with 4. Simple. But in one time step, in a single time step, or in a single mesh cycle, whichever you call it, okay, uh, the operator finishes job of writing the data. Suppose if you want to read the data, it will again be finished in a single mission cycle. Mission cycle or in a single step. So for all the operators, for all the other th threads of all the other threads, okay, which are waiting, the, for them it will be like at time t equals zero, the value was empty. At time t equals one, the value was the value uh, was filled with four. So it have it for them it happens like one second it was nothing, other second it was filled. So it it looks as if it just got filled instantly, and that's the logic behind atomic operator. Simple as that. Whereas let's say in another operating system or in hardware or in some other programming language, equal sign behaves non-atomic, uh, equal sign is a non-atomic operator and it takes three steps to fill the data. In that case, at time t equals zero, value of a will be empty. At time t equals a, at time, time, um, at time t equals one and two, a data will be filling into a. It will not, be, it will be filling into a. And only at time t equals three, the data would be complete, completely filled in a. So in between steps zero and three, Time steps one and two will have some uh, garbage data actually. Now, they won't be. They're not actually garbage data to be honest, but they're actually in the process of getting filled. So if somebody comes, so some other operator, some other thread comes and tries to access the values at one and two, they can. But if they try to access the values at one and two, they'll get incomplete values or partial values of uh, partial values of the actual data in the binary in the binary part of it. They just get only the partial values. So it's actually pretty much garbage. They get only garbage. So if the other values wanted to access the data, let's say, they have to wait till time step t equals three. So that's the non-atomic process. That's a non-atomic process. So this will this gives you an idea about atomic operators. Let's say, this gives you an at uh, our, uh, I mean uh, idea about atomic operators and non-atomic operators. Okay. With this idea in mind, let's look at this example. Okay. It's not a it's not a very complicated example. I'm just setting m to twelve. I'm setting four threads, two variables, some one and some two are to be zero, and i and j are some uh, iteratum variables. I for the iteration, j for some modification. Okay, others are simple. This intent ex integer external increment is actually a variable at the bottom. It's actually a variable, but it's actually a function which takes thread num and j. We'll come to that. The ma the actual magic of this program takes place over here. I just said j to be i with a little bit of complication because I just want to tell you guys that you can do anything with i and then assign it to j, no matter, that doesn't matter. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to increment I'm going to increment the values of j to the sum value sum one to the variable sum one. So since j is actually i, since i where changes from zero to eleven, so it's go sum one will be added. But sum uh, since sum one is initially initialized to zero, we're going to add one, two, three, four up to eleven to the to the variable. Similarly, the same thing happens to here with a small change. This increment variable is actually a function which takes two variables, thread num and j. Since thread num and j are private over here, okay, the variables are the variable values are independent for each and every thread. The, when these values, because of this, when the function goes over here, when the function gets called over here, these values go into the function as in, as integer with intent n, in, intent n, okay, that's it. And when they go, thread num is used for indicate. Uh, thread num is used by the print statement to tell to uh, tell us which uh, thread actually actually ran this program. And the j is used for, and j is just assigned to the value increment. So the increment value just comes over comes back over here. So if you look at it, this statement is just an exact replication of this statement with an addition that this statement is used for is used to give us a feedback to us as to which thread is printing. Simple as that. And then we just have the print sum one and sum two statements at the bottom for our diagnosis. Simple as that. So if I were to run this statement, let's say. So if I were to run this statement, run the statement, let's say, what would happen is what would happen is that uh, if I run this serially, I'm using the same code which I used last time. There's there's going to be no issue. So there's going to be no issue. So if I run this. All this function increment run by thread number zero, that will be fine. There will be 12 of them, so it will be fine. The summation is 66, so it's perfect. Both of them will be fine. It's fine. Now, if I run this parallelly, that's when the problem comes in. Now, if I, now if I run this parallelly, okay, because we didn't activate the critical block, we're going to come across race conditions. As a consequence, Sometimes the result might come out perfect, but when you run this again, or some other time, the result would be um, the result would be wrong, because race conditions play started to play a role. And in this case, what what could have hap what can you do is that if you suppose if you activate the critical block over here, critical block over here, no matter whatever order they come, it all works fine. No matter whatever order they come, the result works fine, no problem. Now, this is where the advantage of atomic class comes in. In uh, Fortran, in Fortran, okay, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and most of the other most of the uh, binary operators and relation operators are actually um, atomic in nature. As a consequence, if they were to access data or modify data or something like that, they just happen in a single step. So, in this case, let's say. Suppose, uh, suppose uh, this statement. If you look at this statement, suppose at time t equals zero, sum one has some value. At time t equals one, it has to fetch sum one. Time t equals two, it has to fetch some value j. At time t equals three, both of them get added. And time t equals four, sum one gets updated. Let's say that's how it goes. Since the, all of them takes in a single step, that uh, it, it makes sense. So on the other hand, let's say. Addition operation is non-atomic and it takes two steps. Then it takes two steps for some value from someone to come, and then two steps for some value in some j to come, and then addition takes another two steps, two steps, and then it takes another two more steps for the updation to happen. And in this process, there will be two additions. So since there are like eight steps over here, in one of these two steps, if the some other variable wanted to access uh, some other uh, at variable, some other operator wanted to access the same memory location, let's say. Then there might be some race condition involving in those kind of situations. And that time, you just have to put a block or some kind of warning symbol or something like that, and, and make the processor, make the other operator wait for its turn to fetch the data. Even though it's critical block, even though it's a critical block, if you have multiple operators operating on the same memory location, let's say something like that, operators or threads operating on the same memory location, let's say you have to put a block or something. They'll be telling that hey. I'm taking data. Wait for your turn. Something like that. On the other hand, and in those kind of blocks, if the well, those kind of blocks, the waiting period would be large. So if it, in here, the waiting period would be 
where if this equal sign is a non-atomic class and it takes three steps for updating the data something like that then here the waiting period would be three time steps whereas here the waiting period would be just nothing waiting period there won't be any waiting period maybe just one time step maybe that's it imagine you're doing a, imagine you're doing millions and millions of multiplications mul multiplications or mul uh, assignment operations or something like that here if you do uh, here there will be just 3 million uh, time steps of wait wait waiting period totally here 1 million for 1 million additions 1 million operations there will be just 1 million waiting uh, st time steps waiting steps here it will be 3 million when in the when that uh, that level in that level this is this is pretty much uh, messed up this is pretty much messed up so that's where the atomic class comes in. So if you're using critical block, it's not going to use the advantage of the atomic block. And it's even if it is a, even if it's an atomic variable, it's going to put a block and say that it's going to put a, some kind of inherent block and say that hey, an operator is acting on this particular variable, so back off or wait till other variable comes in and finishes it. Okay. When you use atomic block, it understands that okay, atomic variables are using and reduces the waiting period for other uh, operators to come and access the data. As a consequence, at some at some lowermost level, you're having a small optimization. You're able to cut down some time to access the data, and that's about it. And that's where that's the that's where the importance of atomic class happens it comes when it comes into picture. One more thing is atomic class is actually a class, but not a block. So if you have a block of statements, let's say, and you want them to behave in a critical manner, then you put them in a big critical block. But if you have a block of statements that they have to behave in a critical manner and they have atomic operations, put them like this. And after th suppose after this statement you have some other statement which do not which do not have to be have to behave in a critical manner, then this atomic class will not be helpful in those kind of situations. You use critical block instead. So that's the catch. So that's the catch. Um, hope you guys understood this. Okay, if you guys want more clear uh, clear ex explanation, just if you guys just check on or uh, Google about uh, atomic operators, you'll understand this even more better. Okay, then you'll understand that if you just think through think through this example or work work this example on your own, then you guys will understand this much better. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next tutorial. And next tutorial, I'll come up with some other interesting concept to look at. Till then, take care.